Get ready to feel the power. This is MMA Power Hour with Colin Crandall and myself, Adam Rorta. We are bringing you another uh, hopefully amazing episode. Uh, I know we've already got one of the interviews in the can for you guys to check out here in a little bit and uh, a lot of amazing stuff going on. I want to give a huge shout out to Nessus Hemp, uh, one of our amazing partners here uh, for helping get word out about MMA Power Hour and Feel the Power and all the other awesome things we're doing with MMA Power Hour like our website. Uh, make sure to go on over to Nessus Hemp. It's uh, mmaph.nessashemp.com you'll see it come up on the screen here in a little bit uh, for the actual spelling of Nessa's hemp uh, you can go on over there get the best discounts uh, for the hemp oil that they have soon they're going to be putting out an awesome product that's actually a protein powder with some hemp CBDA in it and I know I'm going to be one of the first people to buy it but make sure to go to their website lock it in it's mmaph.nessashemp.com Absolutely. Really, really good stuff. And we are being very selective about anyone we partner with uh, and our sponsors and uh, making sure to try the stuff first and try it for at least a few weeks. And so uh, we did that. Nessus Hemp, really, really good stuff. They truly care and they are a really a science-based company using top quality uh, materials. And the CBDA is uh, is really innovative and, and, uh, and great quality. So, Absolutely. yeah, super excited about that. And uh, anyway, real quick, I uh, wanted to uh, to shout out respect and condolences to the family of Paul the Polar Bear Varlins, uh, early uh, No Holds Barred, back when it was before MMA, NHB, and then MMA fighter and pro wrestler. Paul Varlins was a unique guy. Most, most of you that know me know that I was watching way back in the beginning in the UFC. Paul Varlins came in as a young guy. Uh, in his early 20s against a lot of guys who were kind of more in their prime in their late 20s, early 30s. Uh, he came in as a large man, but not with much training of any kind. And so he didn't always win. But if you really think about it, even if you're a big guy, you go up against guys that are really trained. Uh, they're normally going to beat you down pretty bad. And he did. That did happen sometimes, but not without a fight. Paul Varlins, you know, just would not give up. There was no quit in him him even if his head was being busted open by a knee to the gr face on the ground by Mark Kerr who they're making a movie of uh, anyway all respect God bless you Paul polar bear Varlins 51 years old you left us too soon and uh, hopefully uh, you're uh, you're up in heaven enjoying yourself watching over the us and everybody involved with the sport I'm 100% sure about it Definitely. and Colin uh, we've got two great guests coming up here uh, three actually and uh, man boy am I excited now we did have an amazing uh, uh, fight happen earlier today uh, a whole bunch of fights actually uh, but a uh, nice fight card on a Wednesday morning in the United States here yeah absolutely lots of great action took place culminating in the uh, excellent and exciting matchup of Neil Magny against uh, against uh, uh, Michael Chiesa the Maverick uh, I forget the name of the song that Maverick walked into but it was like a 1980s song that I used to watch wrestlers walk down the aisle to as soon as I heard that I'm like man I'm loving this guy Michael Chiesa for the win and I knew it would be a tough uh, ask but he came through uh, funny enough they had uh, Neil Magny listed as two inches taller but they look like they were like almost face to face at the weigh-ins and and in there and i'll tell you what that wrestling man adam is the wrestler of the two of us i learned a little bit of wrestling in the jujitsu that i've trained in for several years uh but um but man the the wrestling i gotta give it up as a non-wrestler i wish i had been a wrestler years ago because what it, what it, what a great base if you can if you have that threat and you're even in the other skills man what an advantage it gives you and but but i'll tell you this as a non-wrestler neil magny did himself proud he he was constantly fighting off the takedowns he even took down uh, kiesa at one point and uh, oh man i mean from a wrestling perspective it was it was a great fight yeah. uh, and uh, so you know many great it, scrambles right uh, so many great sc scrambles and a lot of people are saying well it was it was low fight iq for magny i i have to disagree i think yeah. kiesa just showed up ready to take down show his wrestling skills yeah and quite frankly it reminded me of kale sanderson and his writing style uh that he really utilized a lot uh back in his when he was had the collegiate reign and 
you know, when you have somebody at that high level of wrestling just stepping in here, I think Kiesa uh, really put himself into discussions now for being one of the greatest wrestlers, uh, the GSP even, you know, uh, this fight really, I, I would put him up there at that level of MMA wrestling and uh, grappling and, and uh, you know, Magni, it was a back and forth with that grappling. Um, there was moments that he was able to, uh, when I say he, uh, there was moments where Kiesa was able to really just totally uh, keep the ground control but uh, qu quite frankly magni was doing a good job sneaking in and, and pulling stuff out of nowhere too so uh, absolutely good yeah. great good hips good yep. shrimping he was he was hipscaping a lot and moving in uh you know and uh, definitely props to him yeah i you know i don't know if i'd give uh kiesa that much respect yet although i don't blame you for giving it to him a lot of people do he he called out colby uh Covington and uh, that would be a really really interesting fight but I will say this it definitely did place him in the mix now and that's one thing I said going into this fight that the winner of Magni and um, and Chiesa would place them firmly in the mix and I think that Michael uh, Chiesa did that look at our comments we have now uh, we have one person that said hey hey that's uh, Joe, Joe. <laughs> somebody else is saying you bring trump into raw well i mean no. <laughs> <laughs> raw has nothing to do with not mma to, but hey to, yeah, but you we know, love hey, the comments why not why not I jump in raw i'm with that you know and then mark my friend mark is 23 dana's leading the pack on saturday and definitely rip paul varlins which we just talked about thank you mark uh, for mentioning that and feel the power we're we're here for you we're going to make this an amazing show and as you guys know we make the guests the stars of the show dr adam rorda and i try to bring fun uh to you and information so you know we're i guess we're part of the cast of the show but always uh, we are the cast we are the cast of the show but we always do want to uh, bring you the best interviews we can where we do let the people that you want to watch these fighting stars talk and express themselves and and not be disrespected and not be interrupted and so you'll find that that's something we pride ourselves on if you're new to the show i think you'll like it and uh, we're so glad to have you here if you've been with us for a while we really appreciate you tremendously absolutely and for those of you who, do, who don't know and are catching us for the first time we do have a website pumping out news we're going to have some cross promotional rankings we were supposed to have that started already a uh, long long time ago and then we tried uh, bringing it back and we're, we're getting it started now we're keeping on top of the rankings you can't see it on the website yet but we will have the most authoritative rankings panel in all of mma it's cross promotions uh a cross promotional rankings panel uh with multiple journalists from uh, multiple organizations and i say multiple well over five organizations that are well respected in the sport so make sure to sign up for our mail list keep updated with our rankings and uh yeah you just do that by going over to mmapowerhour.com and uh, make sure to follow us on social media as well while you're at it it's just mma it's at mma power hour on facebook twitter and instagram uh we're going to be getting out there in more places as well uh so you know, just stay tuned and keep up to date with us absolutely and uh as dana white would say if you didn't know now you know now you know thanks to dr adam rorda so we really appreciate you doc so we're still well we're still two three minutes away i guess from our net first guest so let's see what uh what the big fish said here former mma maritime champ going back at it again richard arsenault training heavy Awesome. Yeah, that's good. That's good to hear a big fish. I think you're talking about someone that's not you. You're talking about Richard Arsenault, and that's good to know. Always big respect for anyone that was involved in the military. And, uh, and uh, you know, definitely we'll, we'll look for Richard Arsenault and uh, appreciate the heads up on that. So uh, we also, at the end of this show, we will actually be able to announce two of our three guests for next week uh frequently we don't do that or we can't do that in, until uh a couple days after this show and uh, announce in social media but we're going to actually give you uh two of the three guests that we have absolutely confirmed if we had a third we'd give you that as well but we do have two and they're two very good guests so we'll confirm that at the end of this show anyway uh, as whenever dr adam Rorda is ready since it's a short process why don't you see if you want to reach out to yeah. our first guest and also we have some new sound equipment and the doc is so good at adjusting things am i doing good with my volume doc? 
doc or should I bring it down? Yeah, no, you're great. You're okay. great. Excellent. It's, it's actually a lot easier with this new setup. So Very cool. Well, I'll tell you what, the doctor has done uh, amazing things with minimal stuff uh, over the last several years, and we still don't have the optimal amount of, uh, of expensive equipment, but uh, the doc is an amazing guy at streaming, and he's getting Well, get... I, I would say we're finally at the true stage one okay. of uh, setting everything up. We're real close to, to studio quality here, uh, about a, a $100,000 camera away from it, but other than that, we're all we're all pretty like much it. caught up up that's to speed it. so that's it well we're excited about uh bringing you someday soon a uh, a show in a studio where i'll be at a desk or a podium and we'll have guests coming in it'll be a really good look i've got some different ideas i remember the the best damn sports show period uh, i won't look too much different from what we have right now honestly other than putting you in a desk in front of yeah. you so we could yeah. potentially get that but that wouldn't be having guests in studio right. with us but hey let's That's let's jump into that skype dance uh skype call <laughs> exactly first i want to welcome back neil the security welcome back neil happy to catch uh Glad to catch yeah. another episode. Yeah, we, we love you guys jumping in. Appreciate you, brother. Skype dance time. Yeah, no, no, no. No dance. Not yet. No. No. Not yet. I believe he's not online. Ah. That's... So, yeah, tell him to hop online. A lot we'll of people do. forget to do that. Okay, we'll do. Let me see. Hey, Cody, we're trying to Skype call you, uh, but it looks like you're not online yet. Are you there? Question mark? Okay, so he's uh, a guest that's been on several times, and I don't think he's been late even once. And then once, if he is, he gets on it right away. And so I would there, he's already starting to get response. So sharp, I'm sure he's going to say something like he's just about ready to, or something. And uh, we're really excited <laughs> to have him on. He's got a big fight uh, with another guy that we had on a couple years ago. He's there to try again. He said, "All right, okay, I'm trying again." Okay. No, he must have a different uh, okay. Skype. Uh, My producer says we're trying and no one's answering, so I have a feeling it must be a different Skype that we had for you before. Could you Skype call us at, and then let me type it in. Yeah, this is the fun of our show. Yo, live yes. show, you yeah, get to wait for people to pop in. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, let me see. Uh, oh, uh, I dictated that message. He's just saying we must have an old Skype uh, that's uh, not what you have now. So if you could Skype call us at the above address, that would be awesome. All right. Okay. So I would imagine we should be hearing from him any second. We're really excited. Uh, so what do you, what do you guys think about all these shows jammed together in a two week period? I don't think anyone's complaining. Uh, MMA fans, we're talking about three UFC cards in a two week period. Um, Hey man, it, get, it was set up perfectly for me. You know, watch the inauguration, the inaugural address, and and skip right on over to the main card. It was perfect timing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it really was. It's like I'd wake up early for something. You know, pay attention to politics for you know I'm crazy like that off outside of MMA Power Hour. Yeah, and yeah, uh, <laughs> absolutely, I saw. Go ahead. Skip on over to uh, straight into the main card, and man, it was it was literally the second the inaugural address was done. Instead of listening, watching for everything else, and just flipped on over to uh, UFC, and card was up. I loved it. Yeah, definitely an early one. I don't know how many people caught it, uh, but uh, I did, caught some of the later fights. So it was actually 14 fights. So I think the fights went on from like 6 in the morning all the way to like 3 in the afternoon or something. So it was crazy. Um, let's see if... Uh, I believe I'm seeing some movement here, random. Okay, maybe he's, he's trying to call us here. Okay. Um, uh, funny comment I heard someone make about the inauguration. Uh, a guy posted. He said, "Man, he said the he said uh, the country loves this guy so much that he has to have twenty five thousand National Guards people there protecting him at the Sarah at the inauguration. That's a record, and it probably is. But it is what it is. I guess it's hard. It's to, weird times. Hard, hard, it is weird times. Hard to have everyone love you. There I he guess. is. He's on. Okay. So let me try again. I think." Uh... It's one of those fun Skype issues why people like to use other platforms. That's it. That's it. But we're going to make it happen here. Yep, there, there we go. Is. Skype dance. All right. He's going to be there in a second. Cody, are you there? 
I'm here. Excellent. Right. I appreciate your brother. Whenever you have a chance, if you could hit that uh, video icon, the camera with the line through it, you got it perfect. I'm going to give you a, a, an intro, and we are live here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm super excited to have this next guest back on the show this is one of my favorite fighters from the state of michigan where i grew up they say you can take the boy out of michigan but you can't take michigan out of the boy so even though i'm not there i'm cheering for him this michigander also is no longer training in michigan but i know he's michigan all the way and uh we're super happy to have this man he is a ufc bantamweight contender uh with an amazing big fight coming up and we're talking about the man they call the spartan cody stamen welcome back to the show cody Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So you are in Las Vegas, and you've been training there mostly, I think, for a year or so. Is it exclusively, or do you sometimes get back and train with your team? I think you were Michigan top team back in Michigan, right? Yeah, I actually I got back uh, for a little over a week, uh, this training camp, just during the holidays. Uh, it was good to go home and see everyone and, uh, you know, kind of get back to my roots. Uh, it, was, it was really nice, but I have been – training mainly in uh in las vegas sounds good and i know you're you're doing training with like extreme couture as well as like another team or something or i think they kind of mix it up there with what syndicate and extreme couture or or who who, who are you with and uh, who's been helping you for yeah. this camp so i mean i train uh with casey halstead uh at 10th planet and henderson mm -hmm. uh and i also go to extreme couture for a few practices um i kind of bounce around you know just it's wherever the best competition where the best practices I think are for me. Uh, and then, you know, I do a lot of stuff at the PI as well. I do all my strength conditioning there. I usually meet my coaches at the PI. Um, you know, there's just so many resources in Las Vegas. There's so many, uh, good training partners and, and, and good gyms. Just, it's just a good atmosphere. You know what I mean? Everybody's kind of out for the same thing. And, uh, you know, these guys work hard out here and they do it full time and it's good to be around people that are doing that. Very cool. Very good to hear. Let me ask my producer something here real quick, Cody. Adam, I'm hearing him super loud in my ear. We we had an upgrade in sound, Cody, so I didn't have to talk as loud as I used to, but I'm hearing you mm -hmm. super loud in my ear. I'm going to see if my producer can adjust that uh, and he is looking to do that. And okay, so maybe not quite. Okay. That, okay, perfect. I think that should Better? be. Yep, that is great. Perfect. All right, thank you, Adam. Thank you, Cody. All right, Cody, so uh, cool. I, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate your patience there. Always got to try to make things as good as they can, and uh, and that's there. Okay, so this is an interesting matchup. You were going to go up against uh, Marab Dvalish Willie, and uh, mm -hmm. that fight fell out, and now you got Andre Ewell, a fighter who couldn't be as any more different than Marab uh, Dwalish Willie. Um, the only difference I think is that he's obviously not as an, not as accomplished or I don't think quite as high as highly rated as Marab. But uh, what, what was your thought, man? If I can ask when, when they, when they called you up and said, uh, said, Cody, we're still on, but uh, no Marab, you got Andre Ewell. Can I ask what your first thought was? So there's, there's a, there's a time period, right? They did, like it was announced that Marab uh, wasn't going to fight, and I knew something was was strange because I'd signed the contract and assumed I was fighting Marab, but nothing had been announced. And normally, uh, I sign the contract, and it's like the next day it's announced. All the the media gets a hold of it, and it's announced everywhere, and I can announce it, and uh, that's normally how it would work. But this time, it hadn't been announced for like three weeks, and finally, I I messaged my manager i'm like hey you know i'd really like to start promoting this fight you know what's what's going on he's like okay you know let me let me uh let me double check and make sure that's okay with the ufc and then um he said yeah we're good to go and then i guess it, it comes back that marab uh has covid and mm -hmm. he's not gonna fight mm -hmm. um ironically enough though i mean we were supposed to fight in december i had a back injury and um, you know, Marab, Marab somehow heard that I had COVID and that I wasn't going to fight and, you know, said some negative things about me, like that I was just trying to get out of the fight. Mm. Um, and then it, the exact same thing happens to him and he doesn't fight. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it was a, it was a, one of those weird, weird things. And I'm like, well, you know, who, who do you think they can get me? You know, cause I still want to fight on that day. I've been preparing for that date. I've been working hard for a long time, you know, months and months and months. Uh, I already had a fight fall through in December, like I said, with Marab. He was like, I don't know. We'll wait and see. And I was like, listen, 
I'll say yes to anyone. I don't care who it is. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who it is. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm like so just the first the first person that agrees to fight, I'm gonna do it. You know, I've been getting ready for too long. You know, I'm at a place, you know, mentally and physically where it doesn't really matter who I fight. And uh Andre Ewell came up and you know, I think I'd watch him fight once or twice. Um, kinda knew who he was, but wasn't uh wasn't exactly sure that was the guy and then I remembered, I'm like, this is a Paul Southpaw boxer, and I was fighting a short Orthodox wrestler, so very, very, very different. But luckily, you know, I, I've had plenty of time to kind of prepare and get that look um, that you need. But I mean, the main thing for me is 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 just being in good shape and being you know ready for anything because it doesn't really matter who you fight. I mean, really, the the, the competition is you. You know, that's that's the the true nature of this. You know, everybody's tough. You know, everyone in the UFC is good. Everyone you know poses their own threats you know they're they're good in different ways um and it's just about you know collectively finding ways to beat people and you know i had a really great game plan for marab um and i have just as good a game plan to beat under you absolutely and we'll get into that right away but first i want to share uh, a fan question he asks if you're from michigan if you're an icp fan insane uh, no I'm no not. not you don't like the insane no, clown posse no. they're a little bit before no, your time also really kind of aren't they yeah that's uh yeah they are uh, it's, it's not my speed though i'm uh yeah i'm more of a classic rock guy I'm that's more of a classic cool. rock guy that's cool how about kid rock he's another michigan guy you like kid uh, rock I'm, i like kid rock yeah very cool yeah i thought of i thought about you know walking out to a kid rock song just because you know michigan guy michigan guy absolutely did you watch the fights today did you see do you know the song that michael chiesa walked out to that was classic rock but i forgot the name of it do you remember it did you watch that no i uh i, I missed the walkout I, I saw like one round it was kind of right in the middle of my training today so i actually didn't i'm gonna go back and rewatch the fights uh maybe tomorrow yeah um but no i didn't i didn't see but Mike yes has got good taste, so I'm sure it was a it was a good song. Absolutely, he's a cool dude. It was a great fight. So Andre Ewell, yeah. man, what a different what a different fighter. But like you said, you were able to get that look. I mean, you know, it's interesting because the first matchup, obviously, everyone could see what that would have been. You and Marab would have been like grappling. You it would have been like two two uh, pit bulls like going at each other. You would have been looking for the takedown. You would have been hitting. I mean, that would that probably could have, would have been like had fight of the night written all over it and been just just a, a just an absolute, you know, dog fight. Uh, with this one, you're the superior wrestler. You're the more experienced guy. Uh, and, and, and basically not diminishing Andre Ewell, but I, I believe this is definitely, you know, I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw it out there. I think uh, Andre Ewell is not going to be as hard a fight for someone as Marab Dwalishwili, uh, would have been, but he's, he's long and lanky. I mean, you know, I'll hear, I'll tell you what, I remember he fought a guy, I think it was Nathaniel Wood from England. And I don't think Wood has the wrestling that you have, but he, he has almost like a similar style, you know, that you have, right? He's not a he's not a really tall guy, but he's really physically strong, and he does have some wrestling. And he just, you know, I, I was in there per, in person to see that, and he just punished uh, Andre Ewell. And I'm just thinking that you're a better fighter than Nathaniel Wood. And so my feeling is, if MMA if MMA math was perfect, you know, then you you put a beating on Andre worse than Nathaniel Wood did. Although you never know, but I'm sure you have confidence in that fight. And uh, you know, um, it's just you know, it's going to be what it is. But have you had any, uh, many official fights with guys like that, tall and lanky and skinny before? Yeah, actually, uh, I did. I had one. I I fought Tyrion Ware in my UFC debut. And a couple guys uh, before the UFC that had, like, literally, Terry Ware was 5'8", with a 74-inch reach. Wow. It's identical to Andre Ewell. So I, I have an idea of what it's like. Um, there's definitely a weird feeling out period, though, because that's a hard that's a hard thing to, to imitate someone with that long of arms. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, like, Andre Ewell, and he's a good boxer, you know. He, he hits hard. Um, definitely fighting a southpaw is... is drastically different than fighting someone that's orthodox yeah that's you know a true. lot of the things that a lot of things that you prepare for and, and you expect out of someone that's an orthodox fighter yeah completely different with a southpaw yeah but i you know i've i've fought southpaws in the past i mean i 
I know what I have to do. You know, it's just about, you know, in, during from now until the fight and, you know, for the last two weeks since I've known, um, you know, preparing for that, that different look. I mean, I thought, you know, going in, you know, fighting Marab, nobody wants to fight Marab. No, you know, no. no one wanted to fight Marab. They <laughs> couldn't find him in a replacement. I bet. They couldn't I find it. him in a replacement. On five weeks' notice, they couldn't find anyone that would fight him. Wow. Geez. I mean, that's how terrified people are of this guy, just because he takes – he takes good wrestlers down multiple times in a fight. Yeah. Um, and he, his pressure is, is, is tremendous. I mean, the guy's tough. He's got absolutely no quitting him and he's got a gas tank for, from hell. Yeah. Um, and I've been preparing for that. And, you know, like I wanted to test myself against Marab, you know, I really did. I really did want that fight and I was expecting that fight and, you know, and everything in my heart told me that I was, I was going to beat him. Like I, you know what I mean? The, the, the preparation, um, you know, I knew how good a shape I had to be in. I yep. knew, you know, that I had to wrestle a lot and I knew I had to be, uh, you know, ready for that pace and in getting ready for Marab, you know, I'm probably in the best shape of my life just because, uh, you know, my, my wrestling is the sharpest it's been maybe my entire career. I've never wrestled this much. Um, nice, you know, because I was just getting ready for that specific opponent. Um, and then, you know, the, that goes out the window and now I'm fighting Andre Yule. Um, to honest to God, I mean, if, if I know that for a fact, if I wanted to set the USC takedown record against Andre Yule, yeah. I could do it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I know that I can take this guy down whenever I want, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's yeah. something that, that is detrimental. I mean, a fight, you know, you see this all the time. You see guys that are just great strikers, great boxers. You know, they're they're fast. They hit hard. They can knock people out. I mean, Conor versus Khabib. You know, Conor knocks everybody out. You know, Khabib doesn't knock anybody out, but he he is dominant in a, in the grappling exchanges. You know, so anytime I'm going into a fight where I feel like I have a distinct advantage in the wrestling, I can decide where this fight ends up. If I want to fight on my feet, we'll fight on. We'll fight on my feet. If I decide I want to take this guy down, I can do this whenever I want. I mean, as soon as the opportunity comes up, you know. And the, I think about Andre Yule. Like Andre Yule, ultimately his goal the entire fight is to keep me the hell away from. Like yeah. he can't let me anywhere near him. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, he has a lot longer reach. But I mean, if you watch fights, eventually you end up close. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, so for Andre Yule to win. He has to literally keep me at the end of his range the entire fight. He can't let me. As soon as I bridge that gap, it's over. Yeah. You know what I mean? As soon yeah. as I get, as soon as I get to his legs, as soon as, as soon as I get past his reach, you know what I mean? And I can hit him. Uh, you know he's in trouble. And and the the way he fights, the way he jumps in with his shots, just it's bad news against somebody that can really wrestle. Because I've seen, like you said, guys that are a lot, you know, a lot worse wrestlers than me take him down. Yeah. Um, guys that don't don't have good shots, you know, and I have one of the best shots in MMA. Um, I take everybody down. I mean, good wrestlers, college wrestlers. I, you know what I mean. Like I, I take down. You know, I took down the number one guy in the world four times in a round. Yep. So I mean, if 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 I decide to take somebody down, like I I can do that. Yeah. Um, and you know that's, I don't know. I mean, we'll see how the fight goes. You know, if uh, if if I had my way, I wouldn't use my takedowns you know what i mean it just yep. so happens that in fights like my goal is always not to get hit not to take damage not to be you know what i mean i don't want to be one of those guys that's talking on the side of my mouth when i'm done fighting you know so i've always been a super technical fighter i've always i've always tried to avoid the damage as much as possible and you know what i mean if i feel like at any moment andre yule is you know what i mean doing well on his feet I'm going to put him on his ass. That, that's just the reality of it. You know, I, you know, and I have that ability. That's something that I've been working on for, you know, 20 years. Absolutely. And, uh, that's, uh, that's not a good, not a good thing for, uh, somebody like Andre. Very true. In his last fight against Irwin Rivera, I thought Rivera beat him. Did you watch that fight? Did you have that same opinion or, or did you not really? Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a close, it was a close fight. Um, I thought Andre came out. He comes out hot, right? He comes out really, really hot. He yep. comes out uh, in that first round. Um, he's real springy, real fast, good counters. Um, I thought he looked really, really good in that fight in the first round. And then in the second round, you know, close, really close. Third round, also really close, you know. That's a tough one to score. It depends on what you're looking at. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I felt like uh, 
he was definitely the busier, busier guy. You know, Andre Yule was definitely busier. He threw more punches for sure. Probably landed more punches, but uh, when he got hit, it was it was hurting. It was hurting. You know what I mean? It, yeah. Clearly, it was hurting him. It was knocking him back. You know, he's getting hit with hard shots. He got taken down uh, in both rounds, I believe. So, depends on what you're looking at. You know, you never know what judges are are holding higher. You know what I mean? And that's one of the problems with the judging is. You don't know. I mean, sitting on the couch, you have no idea what they're saying. They could be saying, seeing something totally different. They're, you know, sitting cage side. They might not get the right angle for, for something that you would see clear as day. So yeah, um, it's just, it's 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 strange. You, you never know. I mean, you really never know. Yeah. I did watch him fight. I watched him fight Jonathan Martinez, and I definitely thought he lost that fight. And he yeah. ended up winning a split decision there. Yeah. So I mean, you're talking about a guy that's winning split decisions against guys that aren't ranked. Yeah, and you know I'm fighting the cream of the crop. I'm fighting the best guys in the yeah. world. I'm fighting, yeah. you know what I mean. I'm fighting Aljamain Sterling. I'm fighting Jimmy Rivera. You yeah, know, I'm fighting uh, Brian Callagher. Like, yeah, you know my resume speaks for itself at this point. Like I've fought some of the best guys at bantamweight ever. You know, so mm-hmm. um, there's nothing that is going to happen in there that I, I haven't seen before. Absolutely. You know, have I fought someone that's a southpaw that's that long? No, but. Uh, but listen, I can handle my business. I know what I, I know what I gotta do. Yeah, you know, I know what my job is. Absolutely. And uh, like I said, all I gotta do is bridge that gap one time. Yep. And it's over. You know, once it, once I once I break that distance one time, I mean, he's screwed. Without a doubt. Let me ask you this, Cody. In a situation like this. I could see some fighters going in there thinking, man, I don't even have to be like awake to beat this guy. And I could, you know, I mean, I know you're not the kind of guy that's going to go in uh, overcompetent or not paying attention, but is is it a real thing that sometimes when you're pit, pit, matched up with a guy that, that you and everyone else really thinks you can, you can win without too much of a problem, does that ever present a problem? And, and, you know, and if, and if so, how do you avoid falling into that trap like I, i've actually seen guys walk in and look like they're going they're just making a face like oh please you know this guy's in front of me and you know how do you avoid that or or is that something that's never been a problem for you how does your mindset work is it a little bit harder than if you were going against marab and you're like you know that you're in there with someone just as good as you yeah i mean uh i approach every fight like it's it's the biggest fight of my life i mean because essentially, you know, every single fight is it's pivotal in your career where, where you know, where where you're going to go next. I mean, so by no means have I done anything differently. If anything, I stepped on the pedal a little harder uh, when I found out I was fighting Andre Ewell because the changes that I needed to make, you know what I mean? And, and I've been super focused on that. Uh, there are a lot of times when I feel like guys do tend – to take certain opponents lightly and it, and this is this is mma there are so many ways to get beat you know what i mean like it is very very hard to come out of this unscathed and you got to figure every single guy that made it to the ufc like these guys can fight like they can all fight you know there's not anyone in the ufc that doesn't deserve to be here you don't get here on by accident you know what i mean you gotta you there's a lot of hard work and dedication and sacrifice and and there's a lot of lumps you got to take just to get your opportunity at the show um, and Andre, you all, someone that is, is, is won and has been successful in the UFC. So, um, no, I'm definitely not taking this guy lightly. I expect, you know, him to be the absolute best version of himself, yeah. uh, on Saturday night. Um, but with that being said, you know, I've worked tirelessly, you know, for years and years and years to be the best, not, not second place, not, not third place. Like my goal is to be the absolute best in the world. Um, you know, so do I look at anyone like they're uh, uh, above me or that they're a better fighter or that they're competitive with me? No, I don't. I don't think that there's a guy on the planet that can beat me besides me. Um, and my uh, my work ethic uh, reflects that. You know, I, I don't I don't cut corners. I, I do everything that I need to do in preparation for for a fight. I mean, I've had fights in, on short notice that you could say that I wasn't prepared for, but, um, that's the sport. You know what I mean? If you give me two months to get ready for a fight, it doesn't matter who it is. Uh, I am going to be in shape. I'm going to be the sharpest, 
you know, athlete I can absolutely be. And, uh, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is a, been a, like a four month training camp for me. So, you know, I'm just chomping at the bit at this point just to get in there. You know, I've been, this is, uh, this reminds me a lot of, uh, last year, you know, mm-hmm. when a fight got canceled and I, and I did a full hard 10 week training camp fight gets canceled then I'm fighting again in a month. So I keep my you know foot on the pedal and then, Oh no, that, that gets postponed. And then I'm, and then my opponent gets hurt and now I'm fighting someone else. And now I've been in fight camp for four and a half months. Uh, and you know, at that point I'm just chomping at the bit. I can't wait to get in there and, and, and fight. Um, you know, cause I'm, I'm over, I'm over training. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even want to train anymore. I've done so much, you know, but I, I just like the last two weeks, you know, it's, there's, there's, uh, there's obviously there's nerves, you're, you're anxious, but you know, for me, it's mainly just right now, I just got to stay calm and be patient. Um, cause my opportunity is going to come. Absolutely. And, uh, I'm definitely going to make the most of it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Cody. I really appreciate it. We've got about eight or 10 more minutes with you. I want to throw some rapid fire questions at you if you don't mind. Cause we have a lot of people that have questions for you and then myself also. And so, uh, let me, let me give you some multiple uh, questions here. First one, uh, someone asked, which I think is an interesting question. And his question was, and it's from the big fish our one of our fans and friends here. How often do you train? And before you answer that, that is really an interesting interesting question because i don't know if you want to share that or if it's a secret or whatever but i think oh, no. a lot of people don't know are you guys training seven days a week or six do you do two training sessions a day or one could you fill us in a little bit on the training of cody the spartan stamen uh when you're in a training camp how often how many times a day maybe how many hours how many days a week so uh you know there's definitely a a threshold right there's so only your body can only take so much right yeah, yep. and you, you have to you have to find that place and it takes years and years and years of, of you know trial and error to figure out exactly how much you can take you know before things start breaking before you start getting hurt before you your your performances start uh declining and for for a long time you know i would just put my foot on the gas all the way until the fight um, but I've learned, you know, smarter, better ways, you know, thanks to the PI, thanks to, you know, people that have come before me that are smarter and that have made the mistakes that I've made. Uh, you know, I figured out about what my number is about how many times I can train in a week, um, for that app to be the, the, the optimal athlete that I can be. And it's, it's somewhere between 12 and 15, uh, times a week. And it, and it varies. And, you know, sometimes I take a day off a week, uh, you know, if I'm feeling good, uh, sometimes I take two days off and maybe, maybe I'm feeling worn out. Maybe Friday comes around and I do my last hard session on Friday and I'm just beat. I mean, and it, like, it's not, I mean, it's not like, uh, something you can push through. You know what I mean? You gotta, yeah, there's a, there's a time you gotta listen to your body and be like, listen, dude, you're like getting tired walking up a set of stairs. Like you're not getting in better shape at this point. You're just beating yourself up. Right. Um, so you gotta, you got to know when to, to let off the pedal, but I would say, you know, on average, uh, 15 times, I would say a week. Um, some of those practices are hard. Some of them are really hard. Some of them are, uh, you know, what I would call a recovery practice or more like a drill session. Um, and you gotta, it, it all, it always varies, right? I mean, literally it's normally only one really high intensity workout a day. Okay. Um, that just kind of taps my energy systems. And then, you know, the rest of the day I'm kind of garbage. Okay. Really, I don't have the energy to do much. Um, so it normally consists of one practice a day. That's going to be crazy hard. And then two practices, one of them might be like, a, a strength conditioning where I'm doing, you know, rehab type exercises and doing strength stuff, you know, to get stronger, to, you know, make sure injury prevention type stuff. And then another one might be a hour and a half drill session. So, I mean, I mean it's, a, it's a lot and it, and it does vary, uh, day to day. Um, but I've, I've got it kind of down to a system at this point. And, uh, I, I, I know, uh, I know about where my body will be and when, and when I need to start pulling off and tapering, you know, for the fight so that I can peak. Cause I want to, I want my body to recover before I step into the cage. I want to be fully recovered. You know, I just did, you know, four months of tireless hard work and I, I want that my body and my muscles and everything in my mind needs, it needs to fully recover so that when I go into the, the cage, you know, I'm, uh, 
I'm 100% or as close as I can be. Absolutely. Recovery is so much what it's about. And I think uh, only in the last maybe 30 years have athletes really known about that. From what I remember and what I read in the 1970s and 60s and 50s, all guys could think about is whoever trained more hours, more days a week, you know, more day, you know, was winning. And then guys were just beating themselves down. So it is really important. In the last few minutes we have you, uh, Cody, um, let me ask you this. My thought is, and obviously you have your game plan, but I always like to share my thoughts because I've been a martial artist for many years and trained and I've been a fight fan for so many years I can see uh, his trainers telling him that the biggest chances he's going to have is if he can catch you with the knee up the middle or if he can catch you in some sort of super slick Damian Maya submission uh, off his back when you take him down and I have a feeling you, your camp has got you really prepared uh, for that. And, and that's probably not so, a surprising uh, information, is it? Yeah, I mean, if I'm Andre Yule and, and I'm fighting me, I'm, I'm, definitely, uh, I'm definitely thinking that, like, I, I got I to gotta catch this guy. I have to, you know, I got to do something. Um, I got to put his lights out, you know, because... Ultimately, you know, if I think if he's being honest with himself, he's not going to be able to keep up with my with my wrestling, and he's he's not going to be able to keep up with my pace. You know, I've been training for four months. He's had a month to prepare for this fight, and maybe he's in great shape. You know what I mean? And honestly, I hope he is. I hope he's the best version of himself that he can be. Yeah. Um, because I want I want a legit competitor in there. I want to fight somebody that's that's really game, uh, and I want him to bring his best. Um, and as far as like the knee or the submission go, I mean that would be. Uh, anybody's game plan against anyone, you know, like, yeah, obviously if, if you, if, if there's, if you're fighting a wrestler, oh yeah, you want to, you want to snatch a submission up on the way down or, you know, you want to catch him on the way in, but that is a hard, hard thing to do. Yeah. Uh, in this game, especially, you know, uh, with some, with somebody that, that, you know what I mean? Like as, as much as he knows about me, I know about him and I know how he, you know, how he, how he prepares. I know what he throws. I know when he throws. Um, he's been pretty consistent in all of his fights. I mean, he does the same things yep. over and over and over again. I see a, a solid pattern. I mean, I read I read him like a, like a kid's book. I know exactly what the guy's going to do, what he's going to bring. Yep. I mean, maybe you can surprise me with something uh, slick, but uh, – I'll be ready for it. Yeah, I think so too, my friend. Well, I want to make sure people know, and I think I'm right on this February 6th, or is it the 13th? I think it's 6th, right? The 6th, the 6th. Yep, yep. February 6th, and that will be in Las Vegas, right? Yes, sir. Excellent, and that's where you train, and uh, this is going to be an amazing fight. I'm glad to hear that your wrestling is at the best and your conditioning is at the best. I can imagine uh, that it would be there when you train for a guy like Marab, and you got Andre Yule. Yeah, I look forward to you, uh, you know, uh, rolling over him and uh you know and showing some uh, some great fighting skill that you always show representing michigan uh cody stamen i really appreciate you coming on brother can't wait to see you uh lock up the victory in an impressive fashion and uh, hopefully get uh some bonus money for your hard work yeah that's what we're aiming for you know it's one thing to go out there and take the guy down everybody knows i can do that but it's another thing to go out there and knock him out you know knock off the striker and that's uh that's also something that you know that's something i i want bad you know i want that really bad Absolutely. um maybe maybe like i want to win i want to win via knockout more than anything else so i'm gonna i'm gonna be swinging for the fences for sure absolutely i like it i look forward to it man really appreciate you taking the time to come on and visit with us and chat cody the spartan stamen go do what you do man can't wait to see you pull off the w in impressive fashion thanks for having me man have a good night you're welcome you too and that was the Spartan Cody Stamen, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry I couldn't get to everyone's uh, questions there. Do apologize. We always will try. Uh, but uh, but sometimes we have another guest coming up and we just don't have uh, the time to do it. But no, really another guest or just a timeline because we have things to talk about. But yeah, yes, hey, yes. Colin, with uh, that interview, he definitely disclosed a lot of information, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and uh, always appreciating uh, Cody yeah. coming on. This is what, his fourth or fifth time Fourth or now? fifth time, yeah. yeah. We also interviewed. 
interviewed him in person about a year and a half ago uh, in Las Vegas. It was really great to meet him there. He's a really good dude, man. And uh, yeah, he's just, you know, I mean, Marab Devalish Willie is a, is a beast. And for him to have trained really hard to go against him, he's got to be just in peak shape. And granted, this is a different opponent, but still, man, it's, I, you know, Andre's a tough dude. He's a nice dude. You never know. Anyone can win any time. Obviously, Andre could probably beat up me and Adam in about one How many times have we had Andre on? Yeah, three? we did have him a couple times on. Two or so. three? Yeah. yeah, so I'm not diminishing that, but I just think this is a, a tough ask for Andre Ewell. I think Cody Stamen is going to bring it and is going to look to put some punishment on uh, the tall. Uh, yeah, nothing against Andre, but I think that's what's yeah. going to happen. I think he really is going to uh, walk away with this uh, with a takedown and a knockout. I think that's what's going to happen, ground yeah. and pound. Yeah. Uh, I think that kind of is what he was hinting at, and I, yeah. I see it going that way, too. Yeah, um, exactly. Also, the, uh, thank you to the big fish for saying great show. Thank you for all the other guy, No Zill, and and uh, definitely we are not worthy. Yeah, we are not it, worthy. Yeah, and he says nobody wants what Ben uh, Ben Askren need of the face. LOL, you're right. <laughs> that is true. It's rare, man. You know, if if you guys remember in that fight where. Uh, where uh, the street Jesus Jorge Masvidal landed that amazing knee against Ben Askren, he looked like he was starting to move sideways, like he was going to be running across the perimeter of the fence or, or around the perimeter of the fence. He totally faked out Askren. I think if you don't do that, if you can't fake out a wrestler, then I'm noticing fewer and fewer wrestlers are getting caught with a knee up the middle. Adam, have you noticed that as well? It's just very rare because you, you have to time it so perfectly. And if you don't time it perfectly, then the wrestler plants you right on your butt and, and the ground and pound and damage can start and you may never get up. So I think maybe less, I think less guys are throwing it and less guys are landing it, you know. Uh, have you noticed that, Adam? Seems like over the years, you're, you know, you're not seeing many uh, up the middle knockouts where a striker catches a wrestler coming in, are you? No, not not very often. And wrestlers are a lot more hesitant to go in for that takedown. Uh, and you know, I'm kind of surprised there's not more outside single leg sweeps coming in uh, <laughs> uh, because everybody seems to look for that that that, that shot straight up the middle. So right. I, I, I don't know. It's stuff. yeah. It's interesting at the end of the day, just trying to figure out where things are going in the sport between wrestlers and, and jujitsu guys and, and all, all the different martial arts forms just coming together. Now it's, it's almost like you're planning for every angle and every aspect that can come at you. Whereas before it was just, Oh, I'm going to use my, my technique. I'm going to bring it to the table. Now it's everything melting together. So it's awesome. I love it. Uh, but, uh, uh, Colin, uh, speaking of, of, coming together and melting together yes uh i, I kind of feel like that's uh, uh conor mcgregor's life right now yeah. <laughs> in the opposite direction <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's melting it, apart it, in it, a lot it, of ways yeah. we'll see what happens with this uh you heard about this uh uh, lawsuit lawsuit against yeah. him right yeah it's just you know when knows? are they gonna stop with him? it's a question man especially if he's not doing this stuff then shame on these people for trying to do a money grab and to and to drag his name through the mud and it's if hard to tell whether it is a money grab or not and you know right. i'm gonna stay if impartial he, yeah. and unbiased on this yeah you know we connor, don't know. connor as an athlete it's great but you know having a lawsuit against him for uh it's just a civil suit like, there was no criminal that's a very complaints weird charge then. that's very weird then that really shows that it probably is a money grab yeah though, it so. really feels like like a money grab but yeah. I, I have to stay on bias on it yeah, so yeah you know, we do it, it let me answer three quick questions before we get our next guest if you don't mind doc uh this is from ibzon arroyo and um and uh thoughts he wants uh, our thoughts on ken shermock dan severn and jack or jake hager i'll give mine first uh doc and then you can give yours if you want ken shermock great legend uh unique guy some people love him some people hate him he's always been respectful to me when we've spoken on the show um he definitely was one of the early guys to have skills and uh and he wasn't really the biggest guy he did take some enhancing you know supplements which he admitted but a lot of guys did it wasn't illegal back then so he was a thick ripped guy but he wasn't really a tall or especially huge guy and he went up against some big heavyweights so he's a tough dude his submissions were slick and he fought for many 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 years so you know respect to ken shamrock dan severin another boy from michigan like myself loved dan severin i don't know anyone that doesn't like Dan Severn. Dan Severn, 100% natural athlete fighting for year after year after year in his 30s and his 40s and his 50s even. And just a great sense of humor. A really cool dude. Love Dan Severn. Big respect for him. Uh, thoughts on Jake Hagar. Um, is a, is a, a, went as Jack Swagger in WWE. Now he's competing in Bellator. Tough dude. Big dude. Not fighting very good opponents. 
Um, don't know if he would look that good if he did fuck good opponents. Op- Good opponents. Um, I'm not trying to slam him, but I think yet to be seen, uh, Jack Hager. Uh, hey, as an MMA, as an MMA uh, fighter, fighter I, yeah. I wouldn't call him the greatest <laughs> ever. No. Uh, is, is, does he have talent there? Yes. He's got some. He's, he, was great, he, was a, he was a collegiate wrestler. Yeah. So he's got a really good background. And he's a big, he's a big, tall guy who's in, who's very fit. I think if you were to throw him in the mix over at UFC, I think he'd be getting obliterated by guys that are not even in cracking the top fifteen. I would think, so, yeah, very, uh, very, yeah, yeah. It, that's kind of my thoughts there with him. Uh, Dan Severn, uh, love the guy as well. Uh, Ken, I actually have had the opportunity to work alongside him. He's a wonderful human being, and as an athlete, uh, you know, I, I've heard a lot of the backstories, and uh, you know, he's he's he, he was he was a great MMA. Fighter for sure. An I mean, iconic, the lions, the, the lions den is yep. is nothing to frown on, uh, on, man on and, the planet or to shrug far. off. I mean, yeah. really, big he, respect for lions den. Absolutely. Yeah, everything that he's done for the sport, I, I I think he really pushed it forward. I don't think he gets enough credit uh, in the, the world of MMA. I don't think he gets enough credit in the world of wrestling either. I agree. Um, listen, they, they, these these guys are all legends on their in their own rights, including uh, J- Jake Swag- Jack Swagger. Well, uh, he's, but a, he's a legend in, his, in progress, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, Dan Severn. They're going to go down in the books as a legend, and and Maybe, you know yeah. all these guys that are doing the transitionary stuff. I mean, you look at like Brock Lesnar. I mean, yep. he's a legend in his own right. We got Brock right behind you to yep. your, uh, it's your left shoulder. So that's right. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I I don't know. These these are all great guys, uh, and and you know we've Absolutely. we haven't had uh, Jake Hager on, but. Well, we're, uh, yeah, maybe we, it could we've be had good. the other two on. Speaking about legends, uh, like uh, like uh, Ibzan says, the world's most dangerous man. And so they called him. My mom sent me a shirt that I thought said "Legend in my own time," but it said "Legend in my own mind." Thanks, mom <laughs> in heaven. You know, <laughs> in and, my own mind. yeah, I never forget. Hey, and, Colin, we yes, only have a couple minutes, yes, and I'm sorry to wanna, interrupt, but yeah, uh, we want to get her going. Well, maybe. not just that. I want I want to go over the fight this weekend ah. real quick, and then we'll get her on. Okay. Uh, so we've we've got uh, uh, Connor and and Poirier coming up. Up. everybody's extremely yeah excited to watch this one i think this may be uh, a, a bigger deal than actually connor and khabib would have ever been uh, uh I, i'm actually gonna go with poirier on this yeah. one yeah i am too how much time do you want to spend since i think she's expecting we're just do, let's call. just do I'm a quick two three minutes okay because yeah. she's expecting we're gonna call yeah, yeah call I know. okay i think poirier too i think poirier's got a really good chance i think at these odds he's a good dog bet i don't think he's gonna get caught right away um i'll tell you guys this and i'm a long 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 time follower of mixed martial arts and and an even longer follower of boxing if 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 connor can just catch dustin quick and get him out of there man that will that will really be telling i think because dustin's ready he's good his hands are better He's in a much better space. This weight is much better. I don't think you can take anything from their fight at 145 six years ago. Uh, and so I think it'll be completely different. But if I'm wrong, if Dustin just, sorry, if Connor just wipes him out, then man, look out everyone else in uh, in the UFC. But I think Dustin's got a good chance. I think it's going to be a really close fight. And I think Dustin's got a good chance to take it. I'm going to I'm gonna call Dustin out as my choice too. Although I don't know how much money I bet, maybe 20 bucks. Because you, with Connor, you never know. I mean, that's good for turn on this one it is yeah so i mean uh, poirier is is the dog since he lost previously and yeah it's going to be really interesting i think it's going to be an interesting fight and i think uh that that dustin is going to be ready for connor to come out and do what he does i mean this is this is huge yeah this is to start out the year so big uh, big so young uh, of a year and then have such a huge fight coming in this is connor seems to like to fight in january i like that he gets his good start going did you want to mention hooker or chandler yeah absolutely i mean this is going to be an interesting yeah everyone crossover yeah everyone knows michael chandler is the king of bellator for many many years two-time or even three-time champ uh really really tough guy for years people have said i wonder how michael chandler could do at the lightweight division and now we're going to find out he's got dan hooker it's almost an even money pick him slight favorite to dan hooker i'm going michael chandler here i think he's going to show his wrestling and it's going to be uh dominant and dan hooker's a double tough guy he's so resilient 
He's got skills. I just don't think Dan Hooker is that guy that some people think he is. But but if he beats Chandler here, maybe he is. Um, I think Michael Chandler wins this fight. I think this is going to be the test for our, our rankings panel that we've all pieced together because we yeah. all have Chandler above Hooker in, in our rankings. Yeah. So we'll see if, if we're actually right here. And I, I think we are. I think Chandler's going to come out and win this one as well. So I think yep. uh, if you were to do a parlay, uh, me personally, I'd be going for uh, Chandler uh, Poirier. Poirier, Chandler. Chandler yeah. and, it could be a good moneymaker. And, and, and probably the next one, Joanne uh, Calderwood. 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 Yeah, me too. Got Calderwood there too, and she is only a slight favorite. So that would be that. Could but be I, good. I feel that one's yeah. gonna be kind of man. Yeah, well, but anyways, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see where that we'll goes. Follow out. us on yeah. social media. And then next up, Matt Frivola, who's coming up uh, after this next guest. He against Opman Azatar. I think he wins in an upset. But anyway, yeah, follow us on social media, MMAPowerHour.com. Let's get that first guest going. If that's enough uh, chatter, Doc. Oh, of course it is. Awesome. I love that chatter. Gotta love it. Skype dance. There she is. Hello there, Sharisa. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. All, all we need you to do is hit the video button. There you go. We are announced, we're going to give you a proper intro as we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, I am really look for, looking forward to having this next guest on the show. She is a great MMA fighter on her own right, coming up into the amazing world of the Bare Knuckles Fighting Championship. Uh, and uh, I can't wait to see what she does. She is a super uh, talented, likable person and someone that a lot of people are talking about. So she's creating some buzz, and uh, we're so happy to have her on the show. The woman they call the sweetheart, Sharisa Sigala. Welcome to the show. Hi, welcome. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So I am excited to talk to you. A lot of people are saying good things about you. Uh, you've you're, you've had six fights in MMA, four and two, which is a very good record. You've you've looked good. You, you're jumping now into the bare knuckle fighting championship. Uh, there's a possible fight down the line if you win this one uh, against uh, against Paige Van Zandt. Although obviously nothing. There's no guarantees yet, you know. But uh, I'm excited to to see. Uh, what your thoughts are about this so when you heard about bare knuckles can you admit to me what your first initial thought was when someone said what do you think Sharisa? bare knuckles honestly i was like hey, you know i'm always down to try anything um it was one thing that i never really thought about but at the time that it was brought up to me it was already when covid was going on so it was like okay if i want to keep you know displaying my art i gotta do something and it's boxing pretty much without gloves so you know to me i was like i'm down i'll oh, do it i like it now in mma it's already hard for people to get a lot of support from friends and family might even be harder for women to get support when their friends or family might say no don't get your face all messed up you know um but what was it like when you mentioned to your friends or family bare knuckles did, did they shriek or say what the hell or what was the reaction from some of the people close to you I think a lot of them know who I am and know that I'm going to do anything. But for the most part, that's always what I get. Like, what about your face? I'm like, I can do the same thing in MMA. I can get hurt. You know, my dad gets a little bit worried about me. I'm still his baby girl. I know how it is because I have kids and I feel the same way. But, you know, he's still there supporting me. So, you know, they know they know that I'm going to do what I want to do because I've always been motivated and that type of person that if I want to do it, there's... I'm stubborn as heck. They're not going to, they're not going to change my mind. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I like that. So let me ask you this training for bare knuckles. This is one of the things that is very interesting because mm -hmm. even when you're in MMA or in boxing, you're not going to be like trying to take each other's heads off in training. Uh, but at least you can kind of do it to an extent with gloves on. What the heck can you do as far as training for bare knuckles, at least with the headshots, I guess you can train some body work, but what do you, what, you know, not that you want to give away all the secrets you have if you don't want to, but how do you train for bare knuckles? And before you answer that question, my thought is that even though you can't train a lot, the, the thing I think you wouldn't want is to not know what it feels like for someone to hit you at least maybe 
not that hard in the face at least a couple of times. I mean, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if maybe some fighters go into it like that. They just say, no, I don't want anyone hitting me, marking me up, or, or, or doing anything with their fists before. But my thought is if you go into Bare Knuckles Fighting Championship and you have not been hit in the face with a bare fist, then the, to me that would be insane. What's your thought? How can you prepare? How did you prepare? And, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, what has it been like? A lot of it's like fighting with MMA gloves, you know, because we're used to, I mean, there is a little bit of padding in MMA gloves, you know, that's the difference. But in every day when you're training, you know, it happens. You try as much as you can um, to use your boxing to make sure you're not getting hit in the face, but it's going to happen either way. So it's not very different from, you know, practicing for an actual MMA fight. Um, it's a huge difference is your only using hands so yep. you know you don't have as much to worry about as far as like el i feel like elbow strikes are way worse than getting hit in the face with with the fist yeah um the same thing because if you get you know you can you can take a couple uh, punches uh straight to the face without getting knocked out but if you get a good elbow that's it you're done you know a good free a good knee to the head you're done so you know we all we all have been there um getting punched in the face in MMA practice. So not a huge difference other than the fact there's no padding. Right, absolutely. No, obviously it's not something that you can, that you can or would want to train a lot, you know, for having a sparring partner hit you a lot with bare knuckles because the chances of you getting a cut and then the fight being canceled are present. But have you at least had someone punch you in the face in the last few weeks with a bare fist just to see what it feels like, may I ask? So we do, um, when I start sparring at a couple places, we'll start like practicing with um, no gloves on, but it's not like you're going full force. Right, so right. I don't know what it feels like to get hit in the face with knuckle, but I think they, they know what it feels like to get hit in the face with my knuckle more than they do me the other way around just because a lot of training partners you end up with are going to be guys because there's it's girls are growing but you still have way more men in there than women and so you know it's a little bit different absolutely well that's good it's good that you're getting that feeling because once in a while if you watch some bare knuckle fights once in a while when someone gets hit and reacts really badly the first time it, it looks right almost like they never had anyone hit them even medium speed with a bare fist and as soon as they feel it they're like wow what the hell was that and but you mentioned you've you've had it you've done some you know warming up with that and people had you know people tag you a little bit and then you know from mma about the, being hit with a knee and being hit with an elbow so i think you can handle that the one thing that i've learned about bare knuckles fighting is that uh there's not so many jabs thrown you got to be selective, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, with what you're throwing because hands aren't really made to be hitting faces, <laughs> right, bone on bone. And if you think you're just going to jab the crap out of someone, you know, your hands will be broken at probably after oh, yeah. the third or fourth or fifth jab. So the punches need to mean something. Um, and, uh, and, and I know they will. Um, what do you know about your opponent? You're both making your pro debut, <clears throat> excuse me, in the bare knuckles uh, arena, but she's had a couple MMA fights and you've had several more MMA fights. Um, what do you think she's gonna, she's gonna bring as far as a challenge to you, uh, in this boxing match with bare knuckles? I know she's a little wild. Um, <clears throat> she goes out there and she has um straights that's what she throws a lot but i'm also i'm also used to that uh from training and i've been working a lot of boxing that's pretty much what all that we've been working on for this whole camp um and it's something that i've been working on actually for since i started mma career because you know i i have my black belt in jiu-jitsu right now and i when i started mma i was already a purple belt so the one area that i knew i needed to work on the most was the stand-up so since day one, when I was getting ready to even do my first amateur fight, it was all about boxing. So for me, like I've, I've seen a little bit of everything because you get a ton of different training partners, especially at a gym like um, where I train at. Um, there's not too many 
big gyms around this area and um, in the Inland Empire of California. You got a lot in LA and a lot in like OC um, area, but we're a good hour without traffic. If there is traffic, it's like two hours away. So Millennia is is honestly the biggest gym out here. So we've I've seen so many different styles, which is what gets me ready for these. So I've seen people like her before. I've trained with people like her before. So. I know what, what she's bringing. I know she's going to come out strong and she's going to really, really try to push that beginning pace. But, you know, I've I've been training for a long time and I've done a lot of strength and endurance and I know my cardio is there for her. Very cool. Now, you may know that before boxing with gloves started, there was bare knuckles boxing. A lot of people know, but a lot of people don't know that uh, boxing with gloves um, started at a certain time long ago. And before that, it was bare knuckles. Do you uh, know what year that was that that changed? It was in 1892 yep. that they started doing yep. gloves. That's yep. right. Yep. That was it. Yep. The Marcus of Queensbury rules with gloves started. And really, it was to protect the hands. A lot of people thought it was to become not like less barbaric or less dangerous or less brutal. It really wasn't. People's hands were breaking early in fights. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and so, but now I think in the bare knuckles, there's a lot more knowledge and, you know, people aren't going all berserker mode, uh, you know, with the bare hands and so you can fight strategically but yeah so that actually was the sport many years back so it is an ancient and historic sport let me look at a couple of viewer questions here for you one person uh danny um uh, mcginn when when he heard that you're a mom and you're fighting bare knuckles he said that's one tough mama so you got some respect <laughs> say that again we didn't hear that i talked over you Mike. My kids say the same thing. <laughs> they nice. love it. That's awesome. And you have you have two kids? I have three. Wow. My oldest is nineteen. Yeah, she's gonna be there with me at the fight. So. Nice. That's awesome. That is so cool. Got to cheer for a mother, and you look in great shape, and you know, and you're ready to go. That's cool. The second person asked an interesting question here, and since you are a jujitsu black belt, I'm sure you have an opinion on this person. Uh, I don't want you to spend too much time on this because we want to go back on your fight and talk about you. But uh, Ibzan Arroyo asks your thoughts on Ronda Rousey overall. So I've always loved her as a fighter because the thing is for women we always needed a pioneer and so she was the one that really got women into um ufc and getting i i think more eyes on the sport and i think that's one thing for just women's sports in general that you need you need somebody that's going to go out there and that's going to be able to capture the hearts of billions to get people looking at the sport because i feel like that's the biggest thing for girls. It's so hard. You go out there and you put as much, if not more, into it than the men, because um, we have so much more. I feel like to prove than others. So I think um, in that aspect, I loved her and I love her style. You know, not everybody agrees with who she was outside of the ring, um, but as far as inside of the octagon, I think she was amazing and she did a lot for women's sports. Absolutely. Speaking of which, when you were thinking about getting into MMA, because I think you got into MMA, what, four years ago as a pro or three? Um, It's been, I've actually started like in my 30s, though. It was like about a little over six years ago that I started training for it. And then it was like um, 2000, I want to say 2015 is when I had my first fight. Okay. Did you did you look up to any female or male uh, MMA fighters like Ronda Rousey? And if so, who were the people that either you looked up to or that you enjoyed watching or thought were really good and talented? I always liked people like Gina Carano and uh, Kathy long were amazing and then when i first started watching uh uc it was like i loved watching roger wertha um i know he's not really into it anymore i know he comes and goes and bellator and hasn't had the greatest like record lately but um Tough he was though. always interesting to watch i loved watching his fights yeah and then of course like the Ortiz and um you know chuck liddell and those were all amazing fighters, but and GSP. GSP is another Gracie Baja black belt. So I've, I always loved watching their athleticism and just what they did in the ring and what they brought to it, and and how some of them were a little unsuspecting that you wouldn't think that they would do as much as they did, and 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 they did. They brought it every single time. Absolutely. You think we'll see GSP back for one more, and you think it'll be against Habib? 
I don't know. It's, I feel like it's almost, I feel like the time is almost over where he could come back because I feel like there's going to be a point where n nobody cares as much anymore because there's so many other people that are getting out there that are up and coming, but everybody loves GSP, but there's still a certain age. I know we don't want to say that, but there's still a certain age at one point where you're like, am I really going to want to watch this fight? Yeah. Is it really yeah. going to be the GSP? He, or should he just say, you know, re retired and just leave his record where it was? Yeah, absolutely. He's an amazing fighter. I think he's going to be 40 in a few months. And about three or four years ago in an interview, he said he's not going to be doing this in his 40s. Although you never know. And I hate to have let have people have a number stop them when it's been proven you can still be really effective. Oh, yeah. and, and speaking of which... What do you think as far as seeing women over 40? I had Sarah McMahon on the show, and she's got a big fight coming up. She was on the show six months ago, and then we had her on the show, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Um, it seems like we're seeing women in their mid-30s, but when it comes down to seeing women that are 39, 40, above 40, we're not yet seeing that. Do you think there's any reason why we won't see that or, or that it won't be anywhere near as prevalent as with men? Or do you think, you know, just given enough time, we will start seeing more women 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, uh, and even higher competing in MMA or, or you know, or striking? How about let's just say MMA for, for to start? What do you think? I, I still think you'll have some, and I think it'll keep going. Um, one of the ones that... I actually, when I was a blue belt, I actually went against her in a uh, jiu-jitsu competition. Um, but Marianne Renau, that's another one that, that's in her 40s and she's still fighting. Yes. And I almost think the mindset and also we have kids and there's a certain age where you just want to spend your time, especially because we give up so much time doing this. You sacrifice a lot. So there's a point where you just want to be with your family and so i think that's one of the one of the reasons why um some w women step out of it plus you know i don't always think age is a limiting factor but there is a point um just knowing mechanics and uh you know genetics and what's going on with the body because um that is one of the things that i do study in school um you just know that there's going to be a point where it's gonna you're gonna have to work out like 10 times harder than the 20 year old that you're you know going against yeah so i think you'll still see it it's just going to be one of those things where it's going to be somebody that has to be very very dedicated in in training Absolutely. So, Bare Knuckles, uh, tell us the date, and and I don't know if the arena is set yet, but if it is, I think they may possibly be allowing fans. So, fill us in on how people can uh, can watch this fight on TV and possibly go and see this great Bare Knuckles Fighting Championship event called Knuckle Mania. I think, uh, if unless I'm wrong, tell us about more about this great fight you have coming up February the fifth, right? Yes. So February 5th, it's in Tampa, Florida. I can't remember the name of the actual um, arena, but um, there is still seating available. If you go to bareknuckle.tv, it will um, direct you on how to purchase tickets and then also how you can go and watch it. It's, it's going to be on pay-per-view. And it's on quite a few different um, carriers. I know Fights One, it tells you how to get it on um, Spectrum, Charter, pretty much anywhere you you can get pay-per-view it looks like it's available nice and fight tv as you mentioned one of them absolutely is uh as uh a great source uh, as our distributor here they have some amazing pay-per-views so let me see we've got we've actually got about uh about 12 13 minutes left so have people come over to you and said you're a pretty girl what the hell come on do straight jujitsu you know do something i mean are you finding obviously your dad but then i think your dad realizes that he doesn't want to ruin your dreams but have you had people try to like big brother you or big sister you in the way to say i'm just gonna grab her and turn her face away from thinking about <laughs> fighting and i'll put my arm around her and walk her somewhere else and say hey here's your new career no more fighting for you just because i love you have has anyone come off like that trying really hard to change your mind all the time all the time and but most time they won't tell me they'll tell like another family member or like my kids like your mom shouldn't do that like why does she want to ruin her face but for me i'm like your looks are an easy way to get into things um 
because everybody was always like, you should be a model. I'm only five, four. I'm not tall enough to be right. a model. Right. Um, and it, I've always been more the type that I want to do something based on skill. And so I'm really, really stubborn. <laughs> and so to get me out of not wanting to do this, uh, you'd have to be like handcuff me, like, and not let me go to my flight or something like that um, to not get me to do this. I, I'm one of those that will just, if I set my mind to something, I'm doing it and ain't, nobody's going to uh, change my mind about it. I like that. You're very determined and that's important. So I think in the future, you're open to both MMA and bare knuckle boxing matches. Am I right? Of course. Um, you know, MMA is how I came into the sport. It's something I love because like I said, bare knuckle boxing is amazing. I'm I'm so happy that um, you know, Paul Tyler from Bare Knuckle Management got me into this, you know, and then uh David um uh, Feldman and H Hook are you know, having me on this card. Um but I've always had a love for being able to use all my skill sets, including jujitsu. So I always will want to go back to MMA and do it if, if the opportunity is there. It's always whatever makes the most sense, you know, whatever is going to, obviously the pay is one of the things and just what, what, what is it that's going to do to, you know, take my career even further. That's always what I look into things when I get into them. Absolutely. And you're fighting in the flyweight division at this great knuckle mania event uh, for bare knuckles. And you've also been fighting exclusively at flyweight in MMA or am I wrong? I was doing straw weight. Um, I, d I actually did it um, a catch weight um, pretty close to atom weight um, for one of my fights mm -hmm. and then uh, straw, straw weight for most of them. Um, but coming into this one, I want the names like that come with it, which, you know, if it, I love to fight Paige coming up next. If, if that's, you know, where they want to put me, I'm going to go with whoever they want to go with for my next fight. You know, I'm always looking ahead. And for me, if for bare knuckles, straw, uh, straw weight isn't really set the way it is for flyweight. And flyweight isn't out of the question as far as like weight cuts and stuff for me. It, it makes sense. So this fight is flyweight uh, for your first uh, bare knuckles fight, right? Yes. Okay, very cool. And you're open to others. That makes sense. So Paige, Paige what do you think? Obviously, I think probably not because you necessarily love Paige Van Zandt, but you're cheering for her because it would be a super exciting fight with you, obviously. But break, break that fight down for me, if you would. Uh, who is her opponent? Britain, is it not Britain Hart? No, is yes. it? Or is it? Yeah. And... Yes. And uh, so Britton Hart, did she, she wasn't the one that just fought uh, the Aussie uh, um, Beck uh, Rawlings, was she or no? She did. She fought Beck Rawlings. Uh, that was, I think, one of her first fights uh, that Britton did. And um, I, I watched it. Yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting fight. I mean, Beck obviously looked way more polished, way more composed, uh, you know, and, and and Britain, but Britain was scrappy. She was moving a lot, mm -hmm. though. I mean, like, she was bouncing like a bunny rabbit. It was kind of wild to see. And, you know, and, and, you know, Beck looked like she was just like a sniper holding her arm back and just ready to <laughs> smash her. And, uh, but I'll tell you, I think that, you know, that, that Britain, you know, did pretty well but what do you think break this down how do you see Paige Van Zant versus Britton Hart playing out I find it's probably going to be the same thing because uh, you know every fight that I've seen Britton do it's pretty similar in, in that bouncing around kind of style um, and just trying to go in there and, and going hard um, but I definitely see I know I know um, Paige has a boxing background so I definitely feel like uh, she's gonna be that sharper more polished uh by because you know one thing with california i know she's come from out here she was up the, she was up in san diego she's been at a lot of really good camps you're gonna you know you're gonna find the more polished fighters gonna be at the better camps you're gonna definitely see i think a, a huge difference in just the footwork and just how calm they are under pressure because that's one of the things even with beck is you know even though you get take punches you're not seeing them like <laughs> fall to the canvas or like act you know turn around or anything like that for their opponent uh, to get them because they've been there they've been through hard sparring matches with people that are at decent levels so i think that's what you're going to see with Paige and britain 
Yeah, absolutely. Have you been impressed with Paige's fighting skill in MMA? They, she's fought so many tough women, and, uh, you know, she hasn't beaten a lot of them, although she beat a few of them. She started really young. Uh, I remember when it was Paige and... Uh, and I can't believe it for the guy, the guy's name. Who was the young blonde guy that was like super hyped up at that time? Do you remember who I'm talking about? Dillashaw. It wasn't Dillashaw. I can't remember his name, but I know who you're talking oh, about. Oh, he's such a nice dude, yeah, though. Like, uh, and then he yeah. he eventually went to a different organization. Uh, it was Paige, mm -hmm. and I think his name rhymed Sage. Sage Northcutt. Remember? Yeah. Yep, Paige and oh, okay, Sage. Yes, yes, yes. And, and yes. they were super young, and they were both scrappy. I, mean, I remember one of the things about Paige is that she took just a hellacious beating by Rose Nama Yunus, and I think didn't get subbed until late in the fourth round. But wow, I mean, like, <laughs> you know, let me ask you this. I think that there are some people that are saying that they love to see women's fights that are even but there's some people that are saying that people some people don't want to see one-sided women's fights where one woman is getting just beaten up and ragdolled and big sistered and you know and just smashed mm -hmm. and it's, and some people are saying if that happened too much that could possibly hurt the sport do you agree with that do you think that could be something that you know promoters uh worry about or that or that you think it could be a problem if, if you know if there started to be some matches like if you started to just beat this girl to a pulp but she wouldn't go down what do you think do you think that's something that is is a problem or do you think people will get used to that just like with men Quite honestly, I almost feel like that's a man saying that because <laughs> that just sounds like something that I would hear the guys say because I think you, they think of us as like pretty little delicate flowers. But honestly, like when I watch fights, I, I watch to see, I, usually it's the girls that I want to watch and, and see fight because I like seeing where they go from there. And I don't really see, I think what people want to see is the action back and forth. And when it's so one-sided, you just feel really bad for the person. I think that's in any of them, whether it's men or women. So right. I don't think that's like, a, it's just a girl thing, but I can see people saying that, but I don't think that's something really that promoters should be looking at. Right. I really think promoters want to put on a great fight, whatever is going to get everybody hyped up. Um, but I know how frustrating it is when you're like punching somebody and you're like, why won't this girl go down? Like I keep hitting her and I see her keep backing up. Why is she not done? I think we've all been there. Absolutely. Absolutely. What sports did you participate in when you were younger? Now we only have about uh, two, three minutes, three, four minutes left. Okay. So give me some quick answers to these questions. Rapid fire. What sports were you involved in before uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and before fighting? Uh, and uh, were you even involved in BJJ before MMA? I'm sure you were to have your black belt now. Yes, I was in Jiu Jitsu. And then um, when I was younger, I was in uh, Base, uh, basketball, softball, and volleyball. Those were my biggest ones. And I did a little bit of track. I was uh, hurdles in middle school, but that's pretty much all my sports that I did. Sounds good. And your kids, two boys and a girl, or two girls and a boy, or three girls? Two girls and a boy, and it goes girl, boy, girl. That's very cool. So the, so the boy's got a big sister and a little sister, right? Yes, yes. But her little sister is only um, about 10 months younger. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's quick. That's very cool. What um, yeah. what would be your feeling if any of them expressed interest in fighting professionally as they started to get to be in their teens? You know what? I wouldn't mind it. Uh, I've been one that's the proponent, especially for jujitsu, because I do feel jujitsu is a little more gentle. Um, not so much because there are chokes and stuff involved. But it's just one of those things I want them to know how to take care of themselves, especially the girls. I've always been a proponent for girls to do jiu-jitsu. Very cool. I agree. It's amazing self-defense uh, for women. It's interesting, too, because learning jiu-jitsu is such a great art for women, especially to know uh, to protect themselves against assault from men, sexual assault and like that. Mm -hmm. But yet it seems like it's a hard sell to get the average woman to go into a class where they're going to be laying on someone else's body. And it's really too bad because as you know, probably when you first started, a lot of women just immediately say, hell no. 
I am never coming mm -hmm. back here again. Quickly, what could you tell women about how to get over that and, and, and to learn an art that could really help them protect themselves? Well, if you're really thinking about it, and if that's what you want to do, why would you care who you're going against? Because the whole point is to learn how to get them off of you. So who cares if somebody's laying against you? And then a lot of a lot of places now do girls programs because of that. So yes. there should be nothing that stands in your way. Like there's always somebody that's there that can help you. Absolutely. Uh, another question: What if a, a girl goes in there with her boyfriend and she says, "All I all I want to roll with is my boyfriend. I don't want to roll with any women." Is that okay, or do you think that's not going to quite get you the hundred percent the feel that you want? Hundred percent okay, but a hundred percent of the time, almost one I know it won't. Uh... Gotcha. Understood. Well, un understood. Gotcha. Yeah, it's you know. Uh, actually, repeat that. It got a little bit muffled. One more time. Sorry about that. Yeah, 100% of the time, that's totally okay. But almost 100% of the time, it never works out well. You end up fighting all the time. Yep, I <laughs> I'm agree. Almost every day, mm -mm. <laughs> yep, I agree. I agree with that. Absolutely, absolutely important. Well, Sharissa, I uh, really want to thank you so much uh, for coming on. Before I let you go, I want to let people know that uh, next week we have on our show the one championship uh, heavyweight champion from one championship, Brandon Vera. And we also have Miranda Maverick coming on our show. And she has a huge matchup against Jillian Robertson. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard of all of them. Uh, oh, yeah. Real and, and real quick, favorite... Oh. Who's your favorite UFC women's champ that you think is going to keep the belt longest? Uh, Amanda Nunez, Valentina Shevchenko, or uh, Zhang Weili? My favorite has always been Valentina. Valentina Shevchenko. I know Amanda Nunez is awesome and really strong, but Valentina has always been my favorite to watch. Absolutely great call. I like her a lot too. The bullet is amazing. So February yeah. 5th on pay-per-view, Knuckle Mania, the Bare Knuckles Fighting Championship event. David Feldman, Nate Shook, all the amazing people there. This is someone you guys don't want to miss. Teresa, the sweetheart Sigala. Can't wait to see her in action uh, and uh pull off the win and uh i just want to thank you so much Teresa, for taking your time jumping in here you're such a nice person to talk to and uh and uh just seem like a really genuine sweet person a mother of three going out doing your thing uh fearlessly big respect to you i can't wait to see you and uh, our whole team will be cheering for you on february 5th thanks can't wait to go in thanks for having me you're very welcome have a great night you too thanks bye-bye Super nice girl, that Sharissa Sigala, huh, Dr. Adam Rota? Absolutely, man. I, I, such a sweetheart, man. Yeah, I can't wait to see her fight in bare knuckles and, you know, just knowing more about her and her background and, you know, how focused she is and, and she just seems fearless, you know, and I just, I can't wait to see uh, what she can do. I think it's she's going to be a big star at uh, BKFC and it's good to know that she is making her pro debut with the reputable organization in this country, uh, BKFC and our friend David Feldman. Absolutely. Absolutely. So everybody tuning in, uh, thank you so much. As always, you guys are the reason we have this show going every week. I want to go ahead and give a huge shout out to all of you. Uh, and thank you in advance for all the likes, comments, and shares. Make sure to go on over to our social media. See it going across the top of the screen here. Colin and I don't see it right now, but it is going across the top of the screen. And it's just at MMA Power Hour. Also, make sure to head on over to Nessa's Hemp and a uh, go ahead and buy yourself a bottle of it because really it's the best product on the market when it comes to cbd products hemp oils uh it's uh mmaph.nessashemp.com and i'll show you that here in a second let's yeah, do and that's that. the cbda most formulations CBDA. do not have the cbda and this does and this is a really really absolutely superior product 100 percent from my heart so you see how it's spelled here in a second yep. i just want to make yep. sure it's right you know like i said for my canadian friend cbda eh? there it is <laughs> right there on the screen so if you want to get a nice extra discount it's uh mmaph.nessashemp.com and get yourself a nice little discount above what they normally are giving so uh go ahead and add that in type it in here it'll be worth your while worth the money it'll help support us and uh it really is good quality stuff 
All right. You ready to go into the Skype dance? I am ready for this next great guest. Really excited. All right. Let's do it. Hey, Matt, are you there? Yo. Excellent. All we need you to do is to hit that video icon uh, that looks like an old-fashioned movie camera with a line going through it. And once you hit that, we will be rocking and rolling. All right. Hold on a second. Not a problem. And then, uh, Yo. all right, and there you go. Perfect. Let me give you a proper introduction here. Uh, we're rock and rolling live here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm super excited to have this next guest on the show. He'll be fighting just a few days from now on Saturday uh, on the amazing Conor McGregor Dustin Poirier card. Uh, he is amazing himself, and I uh, can't wait to see him do what he does and take home the W in this fight. We're talking about the man they call the steamroller, Matt Frivola. Welcome to the show, Matt. Yeah, thanks for having me. My pleasure. I really appreciate you, brother. I want to let you know over there in Abu Dhabi, I think you just got in like a half a day or so ago, man. I just want to thank you, man, for agreeing to jump on and talk to us. Yeah, of course, man. Uh, we got in uh, yesterday, and uh, we're, we're quarantined today. Uh, we're about to get our first little quarantine workout in. It's uh, 5.30 a.m. over here, but uh, we're right on schedule. So, so it's looking like I'll be fighting around like 7, 7.30 a.m. Abu Dhabi time. So we're going to start getting our workouts in right around the time that I'm fighting. That sounds good. And 7, 7.30 uh, a.m. Abu Dhabi time then would be set on the on the West Coast where 12 hours difference. It'd be like 7, 7.30 uh, p.m. in California in the West Coast and then 10 uh, o'clock at night. And I think you're an East Coast guy, right? So for your friends and family back in the East Coast, 10 o'clock or 10.30. So uh, that will be cool, man, because, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but they didn't do it like that for the, the Max Holloway card. Those guys... We had to get up at 9 a.m. to start watching the prelims, and then I think Max and uh, and Calvin Cater came on at like 2 p.m. or something. So uh, I'm glad they're not doing it for uh, for for you guys like that because a lot of people end up missing that, not knowing what's going on, and no, you know, friends can't get together, and it's just you know, it's I'm not, I'm not gonna say it's a shit show like some people call it, but I'm glad it's gonna be a nighttime card with you, man. But uh, how was the flight there, man? Had you ever uh, taken an international flight or flown like what is it, 16 hours or something? Yes, the flight was actually awesome. I, they put me up in first class, and like I had a nice, a beautiful seat that like reclined into a bed, and had a, had a nice TV with a bunch of uh, movies on, and the service was great. They were bringing me. I was I was crushing water. They were bringing me water. They they had like like uh, kale juice for me because I'm cutting weight. They had a good like weight cut food that I could be eating, and uh, flight was nice. You know, I was posted up. I was chilling. And uh, I had no complaints with that flight. Very cool, very cool. And everyone on the flight, I think, was gonna, was involved in some way with the UFC, or is that not true? Yeah, yeah. It looked like you know everyone was uh, was UFC people there. That's true. Hey, do you, what, I wonder if any if any fighters ever are waiting in the line for the restroom and get into an argument with other fighters there you think that's happened yet that would be kind of a drag especially if it was someone you were fighting or something right yeah i mean could it could definitely happen but uh you know we we get paid we get paid to fight so hopefully these fighters know the deal yeah i agree you know that reminds me of i remember uh reading an article like i think four or five years ago when uh habib Nurmagomedov uh went out with friends to a club and a bunch of guys started pushing each other. And I think someone was like pushing into him or elbowing him. And even though English is not his first language, he's gotten better at it. And I think he said, Hey guys, I'm a UFC fighter. Why don't we just all chill out, you know, before somebody gets hurt, you know? And, yeah. and he said, everyone kind of stopped for a second, looked at him for a couple seconds. And then it was like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know right and i thought that's a cool thing because that's got to be hard to do have you ever had a situation where someone's being stupid enough to start shoving you in a bar or anything or you know or, or starting to get unruly and have you ever had, wanted to like say something or i mean i'm sure before you were a fighter probably you may have experienced that but how about since you've been a ufc fighter um you know i don't really go out to the bars too much anymore but you know back in the day 
you know, when I was in college and stuff, I would always go out to the bars and uh, and uh, have have a couple drinks and uh, have some fun. And if anything ever like like uh, started started to escalate, people would take one look at my ears. Yep. And then they and they'd back off. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like this guy, this guy looks like he knows what he's doing. Absolutely, and that is a good tip, man. I was never a wrestler. I've been a grappler and jujitsu on and off. Uh, for for more than a dozen years and and train striking and i've always told people if they don't know if someone's ears are dinged up you know just give them a pass you know don't don't bother because <laughs> you you're risking your life in that situation because you got someone that's really trained you know i don't think i've ever heard people talk about it much but for people that don't know for people that didn't wrestle or anyone that's you know watching that doesn't understand you know fighting or anyone's girlfriend or anything like that the, the way that you get kind of the cauliflower ear, I guess, is a lot of wrestling. And it, tell me if I'm wrong or if you can tell me more of it. But a lot of it has to do with friction, like when your 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 head is hitting the mat or if someone's, you know, grabbing you kind of to try to throw you and like grabbing around your head and, and headlocks and stuff. Can you be like a little bit more detailed in, in what you you know more than me that, that can really cause the cauliflower ear? Yeah, you know, ev everyone's different. There's guys who've been grappling their whole lives and they just won't get cauliflower ear. But, some, you know, for me, I wrestled all throughout high school, didn't get any cauliflower ear. And then as soon as I started doing jiu-jitsu, like within like like a, a year of jiu-jitsu, my ears started blowing up. And, and it was mainly like I'd be, they'd, they'd put me in like a guillotine and I'd rip my head out of the guillotine and my ears just get folded over and smushed on. And, yep. And all, and then uh, then they get they get puffy and purple and they're very painful and then you got to get them drained, but uh, once they once they harden you know they're hard right now. Yep. And no no more pain so. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. And then you're right. It does make sense with the jujitsu and the grappling and it's it's you're right. If you're doing that for a good amount of time, you know I was watching a documentary about a guy talking about how jujitsu was like religion to him, you know, going to, to train was like going to church. And I forget, you know, I think this came out a couple of years ago and then I think he was in, in England or something and he saw another guy with the cauliflower ears and he started looking at him. And at first the guy was looking at him like, Hey, what the hell do you want? And then he said, he just pointed to his ear and he had a big cauliflower ear too. And he said, the guy looked at him and like gave him the thumbs up like cool yeah. man yeah you know so it's a brotherhood man of hard work it's it's really rigorous training man there's nothing like being on the mat and grappling for an hour with someone else who's really really good uh you know it's uh like i like to say it's a great a badge, a badge of honor it is it's it kind of feels like the opposite of making love doesn't it <laughs> yeah i guess you know about as opposite as you can get it's like no comfort and, and and all pain and discomfort, you know. But it's a it's a hell of a workout. So let me let me talk to you about your training, man. Are you you training with Sarah Longo or what what gym are you with? Yeah, uh, back home, you know, Long Island, New York is home, and uh, whenever I'm home, I'm training with the Sarah Longo team, and then uh, I go down to Tampa, Florida, where I, I really started my uh, fighting career. Uh, I lived down in Tampa for about seven years. So I go down there and train at uh, Grace Tampa South, and uh, I kind of split my camps now. You know, I'll, I'll be home in Long Island, training, uh, training, uh, getting some high-level training with the Sarah Longo guys, mm -hmm. and then, uh, but you know, that's home and that's I'm pretty comfortable there. You know, I got I got my my woman making my bed every morning, making me breakfast every morning, do my laundry. You know, I, I get a little comfortable back home, and I and I got to make a switch up, and I go down to Tampa. I get. I get new looks. I get new coaches. I'm kind of living like a nomad down there. And, uh, you know, whenever I, I get a little too comfortable, I feel like I need to make a move and just switch things up a little. And and I got a great team uh, down in Tampa, and I got a great team back home in Long Island. You know, everyone's cool. Everyone gets it, and, uh, and we make it work. Very cool. Would you like to tell us who's been helping you for this camp, or is that kind of a secret you don't really want to let out? No, no. Uh, you know, I... I I've been splitting it between uh, the Sarah Longo and Grace Tampa South. I got my Tampa guys with me, my boy uh, Billy Q, who I've been beating up for years. You know, he's uh, nice. he's he's always always helping me. You know, we came up as amateurs together, and uh, you know, I'm always helping him out. He's always helping me out, and uh, tough guy. So we, yeah, yeah. So we we got a lot of great training. And then my head coach and manager Matt Arroyo, and then uh, 
I got my Muay Thai coach, Dan Rawlings, with me. And then uh, when I was back home in Long Island, I was working with Ray Longo, you know, Matt Serra, mm -hmm. and then uh, my striking coach, Eric Heyer, and, uh, and all the guys up there. So it, it's been a great camp, and I'm 100% prepared to make uh, the most out of this uh, huge opportunity I got. Absolutely. And those are some great people. Matt Serra, former UFC champion. I've always been a fan of his. He's such a he's such a, a, a true master of uh, jujitsu and, and a great coach and uh, amazing character, really charismatic dude, man. That guy like represents like an East Coast Italian guy, I think, better than anyone else. What's he like to hang around with, man? Can he does he is he pretty funny sometimes or is he like completely serious when he trains? What What's it like uh, jumping in and doing some training? him and in his 40s will he still jump in there and, and go hard sometimes or does he like to back off that a little bit nowadays yeah he definitely he's always training uh but his energy is contagious like uh, you know we'll, we'll be training in the gym as soon as he walks into the gym you know he's there you know you don't even have you don't have to see him but you'll hear him and then you'll feel his energy and then just his energy is contagious and everyone is you know is, uh is working harder because he's around he's watching and and, uh, you know, at Sarah BJJ, there's killers on the mats. You know, every time, you know, I, I'll do jujitsu class there, uh, there's killers all over the place. And, uh, and it's, it's high level training and it's, and it's, uh, right in my backyard of uh, Huntington, Long Island, so it's great. Absolutely. The, I guess the other Long Island fighter that people know is, uh, is Chris, Chris Weidman. You ever spend any time with him? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I I train at Sarah BJJ and then Longo and Weidman and uh, and Weidman was actually just around the gym. He he was training, getting ready for uh, Uriah Hall, and uh, you know just seeing you know watching him work and uh, you know following his career is and having him you know be a, be a teammate. He's he's the captain, the captain of the team. You know he leads from the front. He leads by example, and uh, and he's a man absolutely really cool dude when i flew in i flew in uh, a year and a half ago to cover uh, the event where he fought in boston he didn't win in that light heavyweight fight uh you know against uh against reyes but you can't win them all but i flew I was at that one it, was that you were there you fought on that card yeah no no i didn't fight but i was i was at that that fight nice yeah it was a cool event when <laughs> so much energy especially people were excited i remember uh joe lozon coming back and and winning yeah. that fight, man. And so, but the funny thing is, I flew in uh, from um, from L.A. and sitting next to me, I think was like a a cousin or an aunt of Chris Weidman. I think like it was his aunt or something. And she and I talked about it, and she said, "Yeah, the Weidmans, Chris, and his whole family—they're just amazingly great people." And so, yeah, it's good to know Long Island is a good uh, good group over there in the five one six area code, pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nice. So you've got a you got a good uh, a fight here on your hands here. Otman, no one knows really how to say his last name. Izatar, Azatar, Azater. Uh he's a tough dude, man, from Morocco, although Sherdog has him fighting out of Germany. So I guess he's a Moroccan guy that fought out of Germany for a while. Both of you are 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 really, you know, up there working on cracking that top ten. Uh, you know, or you may have already. And so this is a big fight, man. What, uh, what do you think he brings to the table and, uh, what makes this, uh, an interesting matchup for you? Yeah. You know, he's undefeated 13 and 0. he's got like 11 first round finishes. So, you know, he's, he's never tasted defeat. He's, uh, you know, I, I remember when I was undefeated. You know, I walk around like my shit don't stink, you know. Right, right. But, uh, I, but you know, I got humbled, and that's what I, what I uh, plan to do to him. You know, he's very good, very strong, uh, great stand-up, but uh, he's never been tested like I'm going to test him. And, uh, you know, it's mixed martial arts, and one of the best things that, I, that I'm good at is uh, mixing, you know, all the martial arts together comes natural to me with the wrestling, the jujitsu, the Muay Thai. And, uh, you know, I plan on dragging him into deep water and drowning him, you know, seeing what he's really made of. I like that. And that's just, that's a statement that I use sometimes in, in my analysis of some fights that I feel that one fighter is kind of going to, like I'd say, take him out to deep water and drown him. And yeah, I think so. I think that, uh, that he's just really used to guys wanting to agree to just stand and bang with him 
and they're just not, you know, they're just not seeing how fast he is there, and they're not understanding that, you know, that that's pretty much his game completely. So, you know, I'm sure you'll be there mixing it up a little bit, but I think uh, having some grappling put on him will be really interesting uh, to see, and I think that uh, you definitely have the skills to beat him. Your last couple fights, super impressive, and your last few fights. And, and you know what, man? I was just saying to my producer, I know that everyone – pretty much will take uh will take a loss when they have a loss and obviously you're not making any excuses you know for that loss that you have but i i just i have a feeling nine out of ten times you beat marco polo reyes so my feeling almost is that that's just like lightning striking almost in in that fight but it is what it is but the reality is aside from that fight no one's been able to handle you and uh and you've got some great fighters the last three fighters the draw with venata and venata is a beast uh jalen turner jalen's been on our show a few times at tarantula and it seems like after uh you beat him he's been killing it against everyone else and uh and then uh the the violent bob ross i love that nickname man for the for the longest time i was like why is this dude luis pena violent bob ross and i'm sitting there scratching my head as my girlfriend that finally told me she said did you say bob ross and i said yeah and she said he was a painter in like the 70s and 80s and 90s with like a big curly hair and like a, you know like a beard and i looked and yeah. the dude looks like louis <laughs> pena <laughs> i mean yeah, tell, that has to be one of the most creative nicknames for a guy to dig into like 20 or 30 years ago and pick an artist and name themselves after the violent Bob Ross. That's kind of funny, don't you think? Yeah, it's a funny one. And, you know, we like to call him emotional Bob Toss. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a good fight, though. But, man, so you've been beating some good people. And uh, and that fight was, was in 2019. So this whole pandemic period, uh, you didn't fight. Were there some fights that were trying to be made for you in this past year or, or that didn't come through or not? Yeah, you know, I was I was supposed to, I was booked to fight three times in 2020, but uh, two of them got canceled due to COVID, and then one of them I broke my foot a week out. So it was you know it was a rough 2020, uh, but you know it was rough for everyone. Everyone had a rough 2020. Yeah. And uh, in the end of the day, you know, I was training the whole time. I was uh, up in my game the whole time. I was leveling up the whole time. And, uh, you know, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing than, than working on my craft and improving. Um, the only shitty part was that I, I wasn't able to fight and show the world. But uh, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, through all those cancellations, I kept at it. I kept training. I kept, you know, kept the faith that my opportunity was going to come. And now, you know, we're on a Conor McGregor pay-per-view card against an undefeated opponent in Fight Island Abu Dhabi. So... Yep. Everything worked out. Now we got this opportunity and make the most of it. Absolutely. And you are in that lightweight division, uh, just like uh, Connor and Dustin Poirier. And uh, and you're one of the guys that it's being talked about uh, as a guy who could be joining that uh, that uh, log jam uh, at the top with a bunch of talented guys. I'm sure you'd love to be uh, up in there. Do you ever like uh, look at like a timeline in, in which you would love to fight one of these top five or six guys? And if so, are there any of them that you think would be the most fun match with you? If you look at Connor, if you look at uh, Dustin, if you look at Justin Gaethje, Charles Oliveira, uh, Michael Chandler, Dan Hooker, uh, you know, uh, Ferguson like that. Yeah, you know, all all these guys, all those guys, it would be an honor to fight them, you know. Um, but right now, you know, I'm focused, focused on Ottman and, you know, one fight at, at a time and, uh, you know, we'll get there. But, uh, you know, I definitely would like me a nice uh, red panty night fight with Connor. That'd yeah, be nice. <laughs> absolutely, man. Well, I tell you what, you're in a really good position. I think you just turned 30 years old a few months ago, and that's really like dead center in your prime. I think so. It's like you can, you're, you're going to be as good, if not better, uh, over the next year or two or three years, even. And, and, you know, and, and could fight for 10 more years in this division. So, uh, you know, I think you're in a really good position, man. Um, do you have any goals for after fighting? Do you think you might like to be a coach or have your own school or be a commentator or, or, you know, uh, what, any involvement uh, that, that you can think of that you would like to uh, to be involved with aside from uh, from fighting? 
Yeah, definitely. You know, I'll, I'll always be involved in uh, martial arts. You know, I'm a martial artist till the day I die. And um, I'll always be involved, you know, somehow once I'm done fighting, um, you know, helping younger fighters, uh, coaching, teaching, uh, being involved uh, somehow. I'll always be around. Excellent. Were there any fighters that you looked up to coming up in this sport? Um, my man, Chris Weidman. Nice. You know, I was I just, he was inspiring from the beginning, you know, watching him take down the legend. Anderson Silva, and then having him be from Long Island, um, you know, he, I was always a huge Chris Weidman fan. Now that you know, now that I, I could call him a friend, I could call him, you know, my team captain. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty, uh, it's a dream come true. You know, absolutely. We well, have a great team there, a great support system. And uh, anyone else in your family involved in fighting, or ever a, a fighter in any way? Uh, you know, my my dad was was uh, was a tough street fighter, so, uh, as he liked to say. But uh, you know, I actually I have a twin brother. Wow. And uh, yeah, but he he's not he doesn't fight. He doesn't. Uh, you know, he he came to a wrestling camp with me once in eighth grade, mm-hmm. and he got kneed in the balls and pissed blood, and then never wrestled again. That's it. You know, that that was the end of his martial arts. But he's an athlete, you know, and we've been competing our our entire lives. You know, he's a really good football player, a good, great baseball player. And he's just a natural athlete. And, uh, you know, I think that's where my competitiveness really comes me and him, uh, just competing our whole lives. And, uh, but, uh, no, he doesn't, he, he likes, he, he's a huge UFC fan, you know, nice. and he's one of those guys who watches, watches the UFC and thinks he can do all that stuff. And he'll come hit mitts with me and, and have some fun. Uh, but, uh, he doesn't really train. Nice. Does he live anywhere near you? Yeah, he's back home in Long Island. Gotcha. Because, like, if you didn't have any training, would you ever try to grab him and use him to dummy for some stuff you wanted to do? I bet he could come in handy for that, maybe. Definitely. definitely. Nice. That's cool to be a twin, though, man. I always thought that would be fun as hell. Did you, like, prank people in high school or junior high school or, like, girls or anything like that where the other guy showed up or something? Well, we're we're fraternal, so we don't we don't look alike. Okay, not that. He, he, that. he was the safety. I was the linebacker. That's cool, man. No, it's good to have brothers and your families behind you. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited to see this fight, man. What do you know? What fight number is probably what a dozen fights as norm as usual, if not thirteen. Are you going to be like the sixth fight in the card or seventh, or do you know? I'm the second fight on the main card. Wow, so. I, I did not know that. That is freaking awesome because I knew you were either like main event of prelims or on the main, but you are on the main. That's sweet. That's got to be a great feeling to be part of the pay-per-view broadcast there, man. That's got to make you happy, huh? Oh, yeah. It's it's pretty amazing. I mean, making making that pay-per-view, pay-per-view uh, jump is pretty cool. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Weight cut going good? You feel good? Yeah, weight cut's going good. About to get this workout in and, uh, you know, start the fight week. It's mon- Monday morning here, about 6 a.m. Uh, so we're get- getting this fight week going, you know. we got to stay quarantined this uh, this whole day. So uh, we're going to do two quarantine workouts today. We're used to it because we, w- we were just quarantined in Vegas for three days, which was pretty horrible because they didn't even have mats for us to work out in oh man they wouldn't even let us go use the gym it was like it, they don't i mean the the second and third day they at least let us work out in the parking lot but the first day we were just working out in the hotel like hallway oh but man. uh you know we made the most of it we got our work in and uh you know in the end of the day it doesn't matter what's going to happen i'm going to show up fight day i'm going to give this guy all i got and uh, it's going to be enough. Absolutely, man. I think, uh, like your nickname, you'll be steamrolling him uh, to the ground, man. I can't wait to see you do what you normally do. What's the best social media place for people to hit you up to show support? Yeah, follow me on uh, Instagram, uh, steamroller for Vola underscore MMA. You know, I'm, sh- I'm sharing everything about Fight Island and the whole fight week and, uh, and all the little behind the scenes stuff that uh that uh people don't usually see so definitely give me a follow on that and uh follow the journey
fantastic man i know people will and uh, we will as well really appreciate appreciate you taking the time uh, my brother matt frivola will be cheering for you go get that w man i know you can yeah appreciate it man You're very Have well. a good one you too take care and yeah. that was the steam roll up matt frivola good dude dr adam rorda this is awesome him joining us here uh less than a week before the big fights here and people are seeing it now three days before the big fights you can go back and backtrack and look at some of the stuff uh that he has shown all uh this week uh in his instagram matt the steamroller frivola i tell you his opponent otman azatar or azatar is a beast but i think like matt said he's gonna put a balanced mma attack on him and, um, you know, I, I really think that Matt can do it. I think that his grappling and his experience and out of a, a great team, uh, Sarah Longo and uh, Gracie Tampa, um, he's going to throw them some, he's going to throw Azatar some great American uh, mixed martial arts and grappling. And I think that may just be uh, more than uh, Mr. Azatar can handle. Absolutely. I, I'm going for uh, the uh, uh, win here for Mr. Favola. I know it's going to be an upset uh, uh, as of right now while I'm looking at the screen. Yeah, what do they say? Um, what do they say the odds are here? There, it looks uh, like it is. Uh, where is it? He's a slight dog. Not by much, man. Wow. But pretty it, pretty and, close to even. But yeah, yeah, very close. One and a, one and a half to one may be favorite for yeah. Azatar. And so you can get a little bit of, uh, of money on Matt Frivola. And uh, I think he can do it. Confident guy, strong guy, great camp. They're both 30 years old. So they're both they're right in their prime and uh this is gonna be uh this fight should be fireworks. Both guys are winners. Frivola, what, eight and one or nine and one, Azatar thirteen and O. Oh. And uh man, gonna be killer. Can't wait to see it and really appreciate Matt. Man, well, Dr. Adam Rorda, what a great show, man. So many great people uh here. And uh, you know, from from the start to the finish, Cody Stamen, thank you so much, uh, brother and then um and then uh also uh very much uh grateful to uh our second guest uh i can't Teresa Sakala. Ter <laughs> <laughs> yeah Teresa. i can't believe my mind is fried today Teresa Sigala, thank you so much too uh and then our last guest mr matt the steamroller frivola really appreciate you guys dr Adam absolutely Rorta, amazing great, great episode show, great and, production on your part as well well you know i'm trying i'm still making a few little mistakes here and there but uh you know what we're pulling it together uh, and it's only because of everybody out there showing the support and love for the show if you haven't already gone over to our uh social media as you see at the top of the screen it is just at mma power hour or, or whatever forward slash mma power hour uh every week we uh, love the interactions thank you so much for interacting here on uh if you're on fight tv uh if you're not on fight tv yet make sure to go on over subscribe to the channel uh the mma power hour channel there it's for free it's f-i-t-e dot tv and uh, you can uh interact with us by uh checking us out on the de desktop i think only on the desktop can you actually chat with us uh otherwise we're found other places you can probably google us now at this point and look for uh videos out there on youtube we are there we do interact we love your guys's input and uh you know uh as far as this last little segment we wouldn't have interacted much uh with any comments because uh as you saw uh with some discrepancies right now or actually a little bit uh pre-recorded yeah this last this little segment, segment was, was. pre-recorded the other did, two yeah. are not so i wanted to go ahead and throw that out there because there were a few discrepancies <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> that so made me kind of we did uh -huh. we, yeah uh, we, we weren't to, supposed to do that but but uh, yeah, people don't mind people understand yeah, we we yeah. caught we caught on a sunday we were able to catch matt Provola, and then this is you guys are seeing it wednesday and i think you all are still happy seeing it then and uh and you know the rest of it uh live today absolutely well you know what colin uh, another amazing episode i want to thank you so much for everything that you've brought forward here uh everybody out there make sure to go on over to nessa's hemp uh it's just mmaph as in 
and MMA Power Hour, MMAPH.Nessa'sHemp.com. Get yourself a nice little discount on that hemp oil. It is the highest quality of all hemp oils. They're basically setting the standard with their, their CBDA formula that they have. It's not just CBD. It is CBDA. And with all the big news that's come out about marijuana now being allowed by the UFC, uh, of course, it's on a state level that uh, needs to be lifted yet as well, but uh, some states already have. So CBD product for all of you fighters out there, all of you athletes, this is one of the best. One, It is definitely the cleanest, and they also have been certified organic, uh, one of the only certified organic hemp oils out there. Uh, make sure to get it. It's MMAPH.NessasHemp.com. Great stuff. Absolutely high quality, and uh, and you know, you definitely would be investing your money for this small amount of cost to buy a bottle uh wisely so that's absolutely really well good. hey colin thank you so much for another amazing episode everybody out there i appreciate everything i am tapping out thank you dr adam Rorta, as always what you do is amazing and uh, your contribution is invaluable really appreciate it and uh yeah so always already thanked uh, the fighters in order and uh thank you guys so much again Cody, Sharissa, and Matt. And, uh, you know, you guys follow them, really good people, and uh, that's what we want. That's who we want to cheer for, are really nice people that we can relate to and that are willing to work hard and that are respectful and that are, are, are really decent, you know, people inside because that's what's important. A lot of people looking at what someone looks out, like outside, obviously, if you're talking about going out with someone or marrying someone, that's important looks. But in reality, the inside is the most important. That's what makes a person who they are. And so uh, treat yourself good. Spread the love in a positive way. Be that guy. Be that girl. Let people know you have your back, even your co-workers and your your neighbors. And take good care of your pets. They love you unconditionally, and they need uh, you know fresh water and uh, fresh food and uh, you know to be walked if they're a dog or, or, or clean litter box if they're a cat. So uh, take good care of them. And uh, that's about it. We're going to bring you a great show next week. We'll let you know the guests uh, on social media. And uh, that's about it for the entire team here at the MMA Power Hour. I'm Colin Crandall, and for tonight, I'm tapping out.